And now, Silicon Angle TV and Wikibon.org present a folk spotlight. Live from Las Vegas at VM World 2011, host John Furrier and Dave Valente illuminating virtual networking with support from HP, Network Virtualization and Cloud Computing were converged infrastructure innovations. Welcome back, everybody. We're here at VMworld Live. I'm here with Stu Miniman. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. Stu, welcome. Thanks, Dave. Okay, we're going to dig deep into the virtual networking spotlight. As you know, Stu, these spotlights are topical, and they are designed to go deep into an area to help users better understand the key issues around particular topics coming from our community. And um, this one is uh, virtual networking. It's sponsored by HP. So let's dive right into it. Stu, we've prepared a set of slides. The first one we're going to look at is the networking megatrends. And I want to ask you, you hear a lot about the flattening of the network. What's behind that? Okay, so, so Dave, uh, basically it goes back to similar to what we had with server environments, we need to get greater utility out of our, our equipment. So on server virtualization, we saw VMware helping us gain greater utilization. And in the network, we also had great inefficiencies. A lot of that was with one gigabit environments, we had what was known as the three-tier network, uh, which was going from uh, my access layer to my aggregation layer and up to the core layer. Uh, and with spanning tree protocol, we are not using a lot of our links. When we go to 10 gigabit environments, we have consolidation. So I have fewer links, and therefore I need to be able to utilize them better. And with things like uh, VMware vMotion, we actually, rather than needing to go up the tree, what's known as north-south traffic, we are actually driving more east-west traffic or server-to-server -server traffic. And that's why we need a flatter, uh, you know, wider network than uh, kind of the, uh, what we had before. We love uh, sports analogies here in the cube. East-west, not good in football. <laughs> much better in networking. Yeah, <laughs> like your running back, you want to want to go 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 and hitting it hard uh, and uh, use all the resources that we have. The okay. okay, the second uh, mega trend that we're looking at. Let's go left to right here. Is uh, this issue of custom ASIC versus versus merchant silicon? In the old days, everybody was highly vertically integrated. A lot of function built into the the customized chips. What's happening now, Stu? Sure, Dave. So right, if if you dial back just even you know five years, uh, the the major uh, switch manufacturers all made their own chips that they needed to bake in their own functionality uh, and have them own their own release cycle. What we've seen is this trend towards uh, off-the-shelf silicon. So that is uh, the same hardware functionality across the board, and it's through software and management that people are adding uh, their value. Now, th this isn't everyone across the board. Cisco, still most of their ASICs are in-house design, but even Cisco, uh, with an announcement earlier this year, has uh, the Nexus 3000 is for high-performance, low-latency environments, and that's off-the-shelf silicon. Uh, and just to note, there, there are three main uh, vendors for the off-the-shelf silicon. Uh, it is Broadcom, Marvell, and Fulker Micro, who was recently acquired by Intel. So you're talking about lower cost, faster time to market, and, a, and an imperative to differentiate through software. Yeah. Okay, uh, lower left, we're talking about virtualization and the security model. Virtualization stresses a lot of things, um, security being one of them. There's a lot of discussion, particularly, Stu, around sort of the level four to level seven yeah. uh, the, segments. La layer four through seven. Yeah, uh, layer four through seven. What? Where function should reside? Should it be in, in the app, in the appliance? W what are your thoughts yeah, on that? Yeah, so, so really uh, this is still one of those it depends models. So VMware came out with their vShield portfolio. Uh, things like firewalls are uh, different places in the network and it really depends on your architecture. Um, in a lot of ways, we were going from kind of the best of breed model to more fully integrated models, so close partnerships and products that can ha have the full portfolio. Okay, and of course the mother of all megatrends here, we're talking about convergence, the convergence of compute, networking, and storage into a, a single set of infrastructure that supports applications horizontally across the portfolio as opposed to purpose built in silos. What, what do you see going on Sure, so, so Dave, first of all, we saw a consolidation in the marketplace where the server vendors now ha have bought networking. So Cisco got into the server business, HP bought 3Com, IBM bought BNT, uh, Dell bought um, Force 10 recently, and uh, we're, we're seeing rather than individual pipes and individual networks for certain applications, uh, really converging things down to a fewer number of connections. Uh, Ethernet is you know, the, the main network in most of these environments, not just uh, the convergence discussion around fiber channel over Ethernet, but also iSCSI and NAS. And there are still plays for fiber channel and FiniBand in those niches. So of course if we could rip and replace, or if we had a green field, it would be no problem, but you can't do that in IT, so the big issue for IT organizations is how do I get from point A 
to point B in a logical progression without disrupting my existing install base. And of course, people and processes are likely even more important than the technology itself. Okay, let's switch gears. Let's take a look at the market angle. Stu, we've got a number of points that we want to make here. Take us through uh, you know, some of the key metrics that you're seeing in terms of market size, market growth, who the major players are, and what the shares look like. Okay, so uh, margins are definitely getting squeezed in the networking space. Overall revenue is not growing that fast, uh, but port counts are growing. We, we've talked about the explosion of data and that ripples to the network. More ports are adding all the time and more uh, environments need to be managed by fewer people. Uh, so uh, th there's there's a real push to try to take uh, market share away from Cisco. Cisco has been the dominant player for you know over 10, 15 years, uh, and now they're they're seeing some strong competition. So the, the latest market share numbers: Cisco sitting at 65 percent, HP's moved up to 12 percent market share after their acquisition with 3Com, and we've seen uh, Juniper and Brocade have separated them themselves from that other pack to have over 2 percent market share each. Okay, and I, there's a notation here that the first time in 10 years that any company other than Cisco has had more than 10 percent market share. So Cisco's really enjoyed. Enjoyed a, a top dog position and a dominant position for a long time. That's starting to change. Yeah. Uh, interesting note. When I used to look at the Dell Oro numbers, they actually had two slides. They called it Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. So they would have Cisco way on top and all these small little companies down the bottom. There, there were seven of them. Uh, now there's been market consolidation. A couple guys have fallen off the face, or gone out of business, been bought by others, and now right, it, it's Cisco. You know, obviously still the dominant 800-pound gorilla in the space. HP is a clear number two. Uh, and, and a couple of vendors trying to separate themselves from the pack uh, to be that number three, number four players. So you've got cloud and virtualization generally, you've got VMware specifically, we're here at VMworld. What's the, the VMware and cloud and virtualization angles here? So, so a lot of it is when we look at management. Uh, just as we, we've seen that ripple effect of virtualization uh, breaking how things are managed, from a networking space, the, the server guy has networking concerns. So there's that balance between what goes in the virtualization environment, so it's, it's the virtual networking, the distributed virtual switch, versus the external networking, and how do I manage those two pieces, because there's a lot more flexibility and mobility than we had in the past. Okay, and we talked about consolidation. Um, another point is we can all agree that Ethernet is king. Uh, where are we with 10 gig e adoptions? So, so 10 gig adoption has really been starting to ramp up over the last couple of years. It's being built into more products. It's really already predominant in the Blade server environment, but we believe with that the Intel Romley uh, generation coming out in the second half of 11, that we'll really see that kick into the, the rack and stack uh, servers so that 10 gig will be prolific. And we're even starting to see 40 gig in some backbone environments and 100 gig coming out since the standards were ratified back in 2010. Okay, let's squ switch gears and take a look at the business angle. On this slide, we've got a number of things that we're watching at SiliconANGLE and Wikibon in, in from a business perspective. And the big one is the new pricing models. We're seeing much more competitive pricing. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so, so Cisco with its dominant uh, position in the marketplace has had a bit of a stranglehold uh, on customers and competition. As the server guys, own some of their own intellectual property and have switches that they can bake into their environments, they're helping to push Cisco out of the rack. Uh, so Cisco is still in the core, uh, and, and it's a high margin business, but they do face tough competition from new generations of architectures, uh, from, from Juniper, from Arista, from HP uh, on the 3Com side, so, so there's challenges there. And services are a big piece of this. I've talked to some of Cisco's largest uh, customers out there, and, and, and to be perfectly honest, some customers are unhappy with Cisco. Uh, they, they don't feel that they've gotten the service that they r really should be expecting as, as a large customer, uh, and then maybe there's a little bit of neglect or even a little bit of arrogance on Cisco's side, and therefore competition that can come in and deliver products at you know lower price and give them the service that they expect are going to allow customers to be able to switch. Well, and you're seeing a, a, a couple of different service models emerge, where you've got certainly IBM and HP and now Dell with the Pro acquisition as to having uh, highly vertically integrated services. You've got others um, like Cisco, like EMC, partnering up with a lot of these services companies who are competitive with IBM and HP. So there's an interesting dynamic going on there, and uh, it's definitely one that we're watching. Absolutely. Um, uh, another I issue is that you know, you've got the, the Cisco whale and you've got the big server vendors uh, that have um, made some acquisitions re recently, and you've still got some, some disruptors like Juniper that are independents, right? 
Um, and, and so everybody wants a piece of Cisco, don't they? Yeah, if, if you just want to buy a 10 gigabit Ethernet switch and you're not looking for the latest, you know, scale out fabric architecture, you can find things much less expensive than what Cisco's offering, you know, easily 30, 40% less. Um, you know, most enterprise customers are really risk averse, uh, but these products all work, they've been baked out, and, are, and are, there's competition to Cisco that are gaining lots of uh, customer wins. And you've got some, uh, because of convergence, you've got some interesting competitive dynamics with uh, co uh, companies that have, have, like Cisco, that haven't traditionally been in the server business, getting into the server business, HP getting much more aggressive into the networking business. Networking has been traditionally a much higher margin business than servers, which have largely been commoditized. Uh, we're seeing H HP you know, pick away at some of, uh, of the, um, the lower end markets and starting to move up to the top of the rack and into core switching, more work needs to be done there. As yeah, you so, so, out. so HP you know, ha has long been known for having some good innovations uh, with their Flex Fabric product line. Their Blade servers really led some of that uh, new generation of wire once technology. Mm -hmm. um, Cisco still competing hard there. Uh, not going to, you know, they're going to fight tooth and nail for that environment. But as we see with the market share standpoint, it, you know, Cisco, if they lose one or two points of uh, market share, it, it, it's not devastating to them, but that can be a doubling or tripling uh, of revenue for the networking products. So you're going to see more and more investment uh, from uh, some of the server manufacturers and some of the independents as, as they uh, smell blood. So the <laughs> market overall is not growing rapidly. I mean, it's you're talking about single digit growth rates, oftentimes flat, so growth is going to come through share gains and disruption, hence all the focus on, on, on market share. Right, and, and virtualization is, is a real uh, area for, for focus, not just the VMware environments, but uh, companies are also partnering with Microsoft, partnering with Citrix, and trying to ride that wave of virtualization, because that's where the growth is in the marketplace. Now again, another point on virtualization is OEM sales of vSphere are under pressure. Um, what's going on there, and what does that mean? Yeah, so, so when you look at VMware, uh, you know, five years ago, VMware was sold mostly by the server manufacturers, and today, it, it's, it's highly more, it's much more distributed. So uh, rather than more than 50% of uh, vSphere licenses going through the OEMs, it's now under a third, I think almost down to a quarter the last time I saw market share there. And part of that is that uh, there's many ways to get your hypervisor. The hypervisor in, in many cases is free, and there's also competition in that space. So uh, some of the server guys are going to uh, license some of the, the free or less expensive options uh, with, when they bundle that offering. Now the other uh, business angle we're watching is, is the imperative of adding value beyond the hypervisor. Right? If you don't own VMware, uh, then you've got to find ways to do that to add value. And now that leads us, Stu, to the, to the technical angle. And in this slide, we've got a number of points that we want to make. What are the big disruptions that you see in the marketplace? Okay, so uh, th there's a lot of kind of open source initiatives out there. So open scale in the cloud environment, and in the networking space, there's open flow. So open flow uh, at Interop uh, a couple of months ago was the buzz of the show. And what we're talking about here is how to build large, scalable environments that can be managed much simpler. So uh, the service providers definitely need this, but it's actually the enterprises where we're going to see this technology first. Uh, it is not, it, it's a software product uh, that is going to be supported by many different vendors out there. HP is participating in this, and it's one that bears watching. And how about... Um Optical. Is optical finally going to replace copper? Yeah, so uh, if we look at the cabling, traditionally uh, Ethernet cabling has been, if we look at one gigabit, over 99% copper. And when we went 10 gigabit, for many years, optical was the only answer. What we've got right now is 10 gigabit Ethernet really starting to ramp up to 10 G base T, so we'll start to see uh, copper seeping into it some, but optical is definitely gaining market share on, on, on copper. The price of copper keeps going up. The differenti differentiator between copper and optical from a price standpoint is being even. And uh, the, the interesting technology that we saw come out of HP Labs is an optical backplane. So uh, very short distances on the backplane, how we attach things has always been copper. And in the future, that could be replaced optical, so uh, Corning's very happy, and uh, th th there definitely is, uh, you know, uh, we're bullish on optical. Okay, um, we talked earlier, you were talking about management. Um, we've covered the stack wars at Wikibon and SiliconANGLE now for a while. 
What's happening in management across the various uh, heterogeneous stacks? Okay, so, so specifically from the network environment, one thing that has been around for a couple of years now is uh, VMware has their embedded switching, and Cisco came out with the 1000V. And the 1000V solved what on, on paper, and, and in many, it was, was, was a real issue, which was I have my networking in my virtual environment and my, my physical environment, and how do I manage both of those? Cisco worked with VMware and said, let's give the networking guys all the keys to the kingdom and make a 1000V, looks just like a Cisco switch, and they can manage that environment. Uh, nobody else invested in that because uh, VMware has enhanced their product and the gap between what I can get from a native networking environment in virtualization uh, versus uh, an external, it, it's kind of merged. So um, there's not much difference now if I just buy a, a VMware environment and use the native networking versus uh, buying a Cisco 1000V. Okay, we talked about adding value beyond the hypervisor. Uh, this next point is, is an example of an embedded technology HP's Flex Fabric yep. is an example of adding value beyond the hypervisor. It has traction. You're saying, however, there really needs to be similar innovation in the top of the rack switch and, and the core switching, which is really Cisco's stronghold. Right, right. The wonderful thing about like uh, the Flex Fabric Virtual Connect is it's a wire once technology and it's really invisible to the customer. So what I mean by that is they buy a blade server, it plugs into their existing environment, and they don't worry about what's inside. So FCOE, as uh, Dave, you and I moderated a session mm -hmm. at SNW, and nobody is banging down the door for a new protocol. Nobody wants to change. I want it to fit into my existing environment, and let me take my time as to how I deploy that. So Flex Fabric Virtual Connect fits into that, and what we're seeing in the new generation of top of rack switches are using Merchant Silicon, they all have FCOE functionality. So once FCOE is built in throughout the stack, 10 gigs built in throughout the stack, and I have lots of options and flexibility as to where and when I turn on convergence technology for my environment. And, and these are high stakes too, especially at the core, because that's really where the high margin, we talked earlier about margins and servers and uh, versus networking, the real high margin is in the big core switches, isn't it? A absolutely, so th there's a big battle for what is your 10 gigabit ethernet switch, and whoever wins that, you've got a design win that's going to last you for, uh, at a customer site for at least five years usually. Okay, and then the last technical angle that we're looking at is, is from a VMware perspective, what do you see going on there with things like vMotion? Um, so uh, this is where the new technology that was announced at uh, VMworld VXLAN plays into it because uh, the scalability of, of layer two environments is limited, uh, but vMotion requires layer two, so how do I have that uh, you know, VM anywhere, anytime flexibility? Um, it, it's, it's still a lot of ways a vision, uh, but uh, VMware and a bronze consortium of uh, the networking groups have brought that to the IETF, and uh, it, it bears watching. Okay, the last slide that we're going to show you is a, a copy of the Gartner Magic Quadrant. Uh, it's a very interesting, for, this is for uh, enterprise networking, very interesting picture. You've got two vendors in the upper right, Cisco and HP, that's where a lot of the pricing action's going on. What do you see here? So, so, so Dave, right, if we talked earlier about market share, Cisco and HP are obviously the number one and new, number two players. Uh, Cisco is still uh, ha having the largest portfolio, and HP has some good product lines. As we said, HP in the rack has some great products. Uh, their core uh, environments, they still need to kind of sort out how the, the Pro Curve and the 3Com fit together in that environment. Um, but from a pricing standpoint, HP definitely can execute. They've got good services, uh, but it's a strong battle there. And th there's innovators. So we look in the, the Visionaries Quadrant, uh, Juniper with its Q Fabric, Brocade with its VCS product line. Uh, and uh, one that we're surprised that we didn't see on here is actually Arista. So uh, Arista has some good technology at low price points and good innovation, a lot of programmability built into it, which is really good for the service providers in the Web 2.0 space. Uh, and kind of surprised to not see it on the Magic Quadrant when uh, so some of the other guys in the lower left we don't hear about too much anymore. Okay, so uh, Stu, thank you for taking us through uh, the, the networking trends, the mega trends. Uh, appreciate you joining me for this spotlight. Um, now, for some of you out there, we maybe went a little fast. Uh, maybe some, some of you, we, this is a little too, too slow, so you, we might want to get a little deeper. So now's a good time to tell you, go to siliconangle.com, go to siliconangle.tv, check out servicesangle.com, our newest publication, and check out wikibon.org. You'll find research, you'll find all kinds of editorial, you'll find videos. Um, you have questions, hopefully we have answers. Hit the edit key, uh, make improvements, share with your peers. Uh, this has been the in-depth first 
segment of the networking, the virtual networking spotlight, stay tuned because we're going to go deeper with subject matter experts, industry experts, and we've got a panel. Stay with us. We'll be right back.